<laughs> love it. Love it. Hey guys, my name is Dan Duran and I'm the host of the Tech Lounge here we discuss topics related to business, technology and cybersecurity. Welcome everybody to the show. Hacked? Don't do this. That's the theme of the show. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that cybersecurity is super important, but we want to make it entertaining. We want to make it fun for you so you can get the message in your head. Right, Andrew? Absolutely not. Don't you don't have to be like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone when he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we are wearing green today because yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. So there you go. Um, just remember, we stream live on YouTube every Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Also, we stream on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitch. And we're also on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. So please make sure you follow us using the hashtag Dan Duran. Oh, hold on. I got, I got that. I got that. What happened? There you go. <laughs> Uh, all right. So um, sit back and relax. This is the Tech Lounge. Hacked? Absolutely. Don't do this. I have with me my co-host extraordinaire, the Rock of Rhino, the one and only, my superstar, Andrew Summerton. How's it going? <laughs> it's going well, Dan. How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. So I, we I, got. I love. I love your shirt. Let me just. You know what, Dan asked me before the shirt. We got to make sure we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So I, I had to literally go through my closet to find something green because I had very little. But yours, I mean, it's like it was custom made for the show. So I love it. I just have to. Yeah, but shout look at my face. Dinner. It looks a little grinier than today <laughs> and than, than, than the other days, right? So I. I well, look, you got the hat. I want you to show show that. Show me your cup too. You got the hat. You got. I think your cup too. You had, where, don't you have drinking a cup that was green? There you go. You're 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 all decked <laughs> out. Nice. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly uh, all right so um i got a couple of um three jokes to start right to get us going so right, um lots let's... of eyes by the way hey everybody i see i see on the channel gladstone's in the background as usual thanks gladstone for for sharing all the technical skill set back there and, and a lot of shout yes. outs to everybody but we'll definitely uh say hi to everybody out throughout the show as we always do absolutely so um uh gladstone let's put the first joke on the screen all right. What do you call it's it's St. Patrick's, right? So these jokes are going to be St. Patrick's related. So what do you call a leprechaun with a sore throat? And please help guys cuz I definitely won't get the answers here. So give shout outs to what you think it could be. Uh leprechaun, uh scratchy, uh uh gold, rainbow. I'm uh oh. I don't know. Um, I, anybody, anybody out there, help me out. All right, that would be a strapped trocon. Strapped, 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 when it's in Idaho, when it's an Idaho potato, get it? Idaho. <laughs> That's, That's good. Like, That's good. That's not bad. It wasn't bad. Eh? It was quick. Um, Idaho. I don't know. Uh, when is an Idaho, not an Irish potato, and it's an Idaho potato? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, when it's a uh, French fry. <laughs> <laughs> when it's a French fry. <laughs> I like my Idaho don't know better. Idaho potatoes. <laughs> oh my God. This is killing me. Okay. The last one. Number, number three. Why did the leprechaun go outside? Wow. He's very nice. To find his pot of gold to. Why did he go outside? He you got me on this one. Anybody? Anybody out Come there? On. I see. I see. Tamara is like, oh lordy, uh, oh lord. Here we go. Ha ha ha. We got. We got. I don't know. Hello, guys. Happy. Come on. Ha ha ha. We got. Ha. Anybody? We need an answer. <laughs> Stop laughing at us. <laughs> he I went. To, he went to his patio. He went to his patio. Paddy. Oh. Pad oh, patio. 
Wow. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody, for, for Dan's jokes today. <laughs> All right. Uh, enough. Enough with that. Okay. So let's get serious. Let's get serious. Um, you know, cybersecurity is super important. Uh, what are the things? And I want to ask you this, uh, Andrew. You know in your head that you do so many things that are not secure. That are <laughs> That's so true. So just to... <laughs> Just to give you an example or give our audience an example, please tell us what are some of the things that you do that you know you should do better, but you don't? Um, you know what? You write your password sometimes down on, on stickies where you maybe shouldn't do it. And I've been, I, in all fairness, I've done that in the past. And, and thanks to Dan, I haven't anymore. <laughs> I've ha I have kept passwords for a very long time and very easy ones for me to remember, which makes it very easy for a hacker. Uh, to get, but that has now been changed as well. Yeah. So those are those are a couple things I definitely have done. I I will own it, um, and and probably others that I probably don't want to openly admit on air. Uh, but those are a few that I would like to share. Yeah, Sean says it's Friday and it's tech lunch time. What could be, what could be better? better? Oh, thank you, <laughs> Sean. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Ah, uh, man, I love the, those words. Love it. Hi, everybody. Chances. Uh, uh, hello, Chances. I, I hope you're doing fantastic today. Absolutely. And Oscar Garrido says, hello, guys. Happy Friday. Right. So I'm going to tell you a little story about Andrew Somerton. Okay. Whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. How am I getting thrown under the bus here? I didn't even know. Wait a second. Uh, I, yeah, I needed to get into <laughs> he, I needed to hit, get into his computer to solve a few things, uh, you know, um, He, he was having problems with his computer and I asked him for his password. <laughs> and you know what he did? He flipped the computer and he had a sticky note on the back <laughs> of the computer with his password on it. <laughs> so one of the things that you should not do is put your passwords and sticky notes and put them somewhere. It, that is like so bad. I right? got sticky notes everywhere. Look, look, see, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It let me let, let's go to the let's let's go to the videos. I want to show you three videos um and um and 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 see what you think about these videos. And I think they're a little comical, but it we gets have, the point across. We have a new visitor, his name's Hattie, and Hattie is an old dear friend of mine, actually. We worked together years ago, and, and he's an incredible young man, Hattie Mortada. Hi, Hattie. I, I think he's throwing me under the bus here too. So Uh, yeah, let's hear about Andrew. No, Hattie, we don't want to hear about Andrew. We don't want to throw him under the bus. I don't think that is a good thing to do during this show. It's about you, the audience, and learning, not me. Um, but if my mistakes can teach you, then I, it's well worth it. Anyways, go ahead, guys. Good to have you, Hattie. All right. All right. <laughs> Hello, Hattie. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's get let's get on with the show and this clips. And these are funny. These are funny. I think you're going to have a, a laugh with this. This one is from uh, Jimmy Campbell. Uh, this was a few years ago, actually, 2015. So it's kind of old, but it's still very relevant. Check this out. It's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password123. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And... <laughs> This is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Wow. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, <laughs> 6, 12, oh, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my? All right, okay. So that's uh, that's the first one, and 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 that's the one that people always always fall for, right? So um, you know, you got to make sure that your passwords are not short, and they're a little more complicated, 
right? Yeah, so there's, there's lots of really good tricks for it, which we'll maybe we'll talk about a little bit because I think there's a I've learned a lot from those easy passwords to not easy passwords. <laughs> yes, exactly. And reusing your password, right? Like you're saying, you know, okay, I I reuse my password sometimes, but you know, there's something called getting pawned. And that's uh, P O W N E D, right? So getting pawned, and that means that sometimes what happens is that um, third-party companies, let's say you know Sony got hacked, or any other big company, Capital uh, One got hacked a couple of years ago, right? So they get your email address, the hackers get the email address and the passwords. So now the hackers have that password, and they might use that password against other applications that you might have. Okay to try to get to the data, right? So uh, so reusing your password is not a very good uh, um, cybersecurity uh, thing to do, right? So that's one of the things. Do not, do not use the same passwords, right? Let's that's get, good. <laughs> let's, get uh, uh, let's get another clip showing. Uh, this one is pretty good. Um, and this is from um, from uh, Mimecast. The Mimecast they have a several several videos on cybersecurity. They are hilarious, and this one is one of my favorite. Let's uh, let's get it playing. Today is perfect for a security breach. Click on everything. That's the lesson I teach. There's no time to think. Just click on the link, and then wait and see what happens. <laughs> Hello there. Ever wonder who's Responsible for most security breaches? Well, you're looking at them. What do you say we go get in some people's heads? See if we can't get them to make some questionable decisions. Sound like fun? For me, it's just another day at the office. When it comes to security, you're going to hear a lot about what you should and should not do. All those mixed messages can get confusing, which is why I'm here to keep security simple. Let's start with passwords. Due to a recent security breach, we need everyone to change their passwords. Again? Yeah. This is so hard. Remember to keep your password simple. Doug, you use the same password for everything. Just go with what you know. Do you have a favorite password that you use for personal stuff? Good news. There's nothing wrong with using the same thing at work. Also, Remember to keep your password obvious. Hey, remember, don't make your password obvious. Right? Anything predictable <laughs> is easy to hack. And easy to remember. Sure, the hackers might get it, but you won't forget it. Use your dog's name and your birthday. Larry216. <laughs> Keyboard patterns also work well. Felix, let's go middle row left. <laughs> Okay, that was. <laughs> I love that was it. Really, it was really <laughs> I, good. So I, I want you to put in the chat right I now. I haven't seen. I haven't seen that one before. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I want you Mr. to put Rogers. in. Mr. Rogers. I, I want you to put in the chat right now. Who uses passwords that are very common, like your dog's name, your 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 pet's name, your your birthday, your uh? Don't don't put your password on the chat, please. <laughs> please do not put the password on the chat. Just. Put, just say yes, me. I, I yes. want to see how many of you because you know everybody does this, and then it's just crazy. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see who can. Uh, Come on! Don't be shy. We know you do it. Hattie, do you do it? If you're still watching, come on, tell us the truth. Everybody yeah, I don't shy. They don't. They don't want to admit to it. Here we go. Hmm. Come on, we're waiting. I know, I know a few of you that I are, I openly admitted on air yeah. that Demaris I did it in the past. Mm. Come on, facepalm in there, cause yes, uh, Oscar's not not me. No, okay, here, not, here's, 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 not you, not you, Oscar. Come on, Felix, put Felix up. <laughs> they're pleading the fifth. That's yeah, that's the right. problem. They they're they're pleading the fifth. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm not admitting anything. <laughs> I use my neighbors. Uh, put up Hatties. <laughs> put up Hatties. <laughs> I use my neighbor's dog's name. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Right. You know, Sean actually commented on my new uh, Shure um, microphone. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Microphone. So I just got this one a couple of days ago. It's an, yeah, and you got it right. It's an uh, SM7B. Uh, 
uh, with the uh, XLR on the back, but it doesn't have the USB. And I also have a 16 uh, millimeter um, 1.4 camera lens. So I'm, and and you know, like a couple of uh, weeks ago, I got. Uh, all this, right, all right. It's hip and his technology toys. Oh, you can I'm, get back all, to the get back to these. I'm all decked up, man. <laughs> I'm all decked up. I see. Who, wait a second. I use an old nickname, numbers and signs. LOL. You know what? That's okay. And you know what? Some some uh, some really great tips are when using an, uh, a password. Obviously, the more more letters you have, or numbers, or or symbols, are are much better. Um, ideally, sixteen plus is is great as well. But if, let's say you use something like, and we've talked about this before, uh, a common a, a movie phrase like "Say hello to my little friend." I know Dan, you use that all the time. But you could change like maybe the S's to fives and then you put like exclamations at the end and a couple periods and stuff that would make you remember. So instead of an S being, a, you know, like an S, make it a five. And so and changes like that is going to help secure those common passwords to make Absolutely. you remember them, but help them become more secure. So just well, a, a nice little tip. It's a very nice. <laughs> it's a very, very nice. nice. <laughs> what, do you do? what do you do when... Um, you try to get into a website, let's say your bank account or your, um, you know, a, a your, um, what do you call it, 365 or, and, and then you keep on getting locked out. Like you try to get in, you put your credentials and then you click on login and it doesn't work. That is a big sign that you've been exactly. hacked. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Because that could be two things. It could be first, a landing page that is a phishing scam that somebody sent you, right? right? And then you clicked on it, you go to the landing page, you put your credentials and it doesn't work. Look at the URL. If it's not the right URL, you probably giving away your password to a hacker already. And you know what? Let's right? just go back, re reiterate that, Dan, because a lot of people may not understand that. You go to put in your password and you're not allowed in. All of a sudden, a fake landing page could come up that looks real and ask you to put your information back in verify using the url up top that it's actually legit because that happens an awful lot of times mm -hmm. and if you're not aware that that could happen you could be putting in and resetting your password on a, on a on a hacked landing page which is now giving the hacker actual all your all your information yes. so it's really really important you heard the, that because it's critical absolutely and the second thing that could have happened is that a hacker already stole your information they locked into the application and then they change the password. So when you try to get in, you're not going to be able to get in successfully because they already did that. They already changed it. And that happens a lot, for example, on uh, Facebook, right? right? I see all the time, man. all the time, family members, friends. Oh, my account is being hacked. And they, they and I see messages from people um, that I haven't talked to, for example, for two years saying, hey, check, check my video out. I click on it. There's a landing page with username and password. And I'm like, oh, man, this yeah. account got hacked. <laughs> and, and they can't get into it, right? So you have to have second or third mechanisms where you can retrieve that information and get the hackers out of your account, right? So, so what not to do is uh, don't enter your passwords on the URLs, for example. Don't share your passwords. Uh, don't, don't make them complicated. Uh, don't reuse them. Those are really, really good tips. Right. And also, also in regards to that, they could be very, very strategic. We had one of our customers one time did the, exactly that. And then they actually posted a phone number. Please call us and we'll walk you through the process. And they called this yes. number that was on the site. And it actually went to an, a hacker organization where they took all the literature, look, all the information, all the pertinent stuff. And we, they actually ended up hacking the, the client, which was um, we actually had to isolate their computer, shut it down, reformat it, et cetera. But you need to do due diligence. And again, this isn't about creating fear. It's about creating awareness um, that that's, is going to give you the tools to make sure that you're doing all the right things to ideally mitigate risk of being hacked, which is really important. Yes, yes. Uh, Gladstone is informing me that my yeah. video is lagging right now. So I just put it in 720, see if that's going to help. If not, I'm sorry, you can, you can see me talking. <laughs> like an and old, then, you know, like a, an a, old karate movie. movie. <laughs> yeah. So the so yeah so the the old, that's something not to do, right? So when you see a pop up on a screen and then you think there's a problem with your computer and there's a, a pop up says call this number. Don't call the number. It's not Microsoft. 
It's not Apple trying to get you to call them. It's not an antivirus, uh, you know, technical support. So um, make sure that you don't call those numbers because those are fake numbers, right? Absolutely. We have, I see we have some questions that, that uh, so from McGill, is it too, uh, sorry, is it a bad idea to use the same password, but in a different order? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It's not a bad idea as long as it's complicated. So, for example, you use a string set of uh, numbers and, and, you know, like you get c complexity and in and, and length and then you can change. But come on, don't change just one digit, right? Don't one yeah, character. Exactly. So like you have the same password and then you just change one F for Facebook, a T for Twitter, L for Instagram. Come on, man. You gotta see, you gotta be smarter than that. You gotta change a few characters inside of that password. It is very common to do that. Um, what I suggest is using different words, right? So, cloud, beer, Irish, dog, and, and make them just a, a string of uh, different words. Right. Those are never they're never going to be uh, hacked if you make it really long, right? So I think that answers your question. So, um, wow, 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 it's a very nice. Very nice. This is Dan's toy guy, just so you know. So I, I, I do love it. I think it's great, but <laughs> he likes to throw his That's very nice. Metal Gear there. <laughs> okay, uh, Oscar asked, ideally, how many characters or special characters should a password have? Um, the longer, the better. The longer, the better. Minimum, minimum 16 uh, letters, icons, uh, etc. would be would be the ideal number to go with. 16 plus is ideal and then mid and then mix it i have capitals lowercase yes. um throwing in like i said an um, an s instead of a five um things like that things that you're going to remember but basically um makes makes the, the chat, absolutely the chats are being had very very yeah. difficult if it's less complex it's got to be at least 16 if it's more complex 12 i think it's you can you can get away with it now if you use a password manager solution like i we use uh, lastpass for example i i have my password set up you know like 30 40 characters that i know that they're never nobody's going to be able to hack that in a centuries you know like i'm talking about 500 centuries right like as we saw uh one in one of the shows right so um okay all the things uh not not to not to, uh, yeah. not to do um if if you get hacked let's say you know you have you you're being hacked um don't sit don't don't wait you need to act very fast you need to go and change the passwords and not just for one account try to change it for all the accounts that you have, right? So if you see that you're missing money in your checking account on your credit card, the first thing that you got to do is call call the credit card, call the the uh, the debit card or your bank and, and report report death, right? Um, and they will help you with that right away. So you got to act on it. Don't sit and wait, right? So don't sit and wait. Um, act on it very quickly. If you are you know you're missing your wallet, and uh, you, you kind of know that you you actually lost it. Make sure that you get replacement for all of those cards right away and monitor afterward because you know your 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 uh, social insurance number, your health card, your 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 driver's license could still be around in the hands of somebody that is a, is a bad entity. And uh, all of a sudden you're going to get uh, impersonated, right? So people can do like hackers can do bad things like you know, buy houses or mortgages on, on, on your name and, and all of that stuff. Right. You know, uh, so, so you got to monitor. It's not just don't sit, don't wait, do it right away in, and, and don't, uh, and monitor your accounts, monitor your stuff. So I think that's a, that's a good one. Right. Um, what, another thing that you should not do. Okay. We got, oh, we got a comment. Question? Here. Okay. It is important uh, to know that if a friend on Facebook sends you a fake landing page, it is not necessarily his fault. Maybe he was hacked and they are impersonating him. Of, of course. Absolutely, yeah. You, you call your friend right away. You say, hey, buddy, you, your account has been hacked. Make sure that you change your password and stuff. And usually people know right away, right, um, yeah. that they've been hacked. And they send messages to everybody saying alerting them. I think that's a good, that's, that's a good thing to do. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that... Um, 
dual factor authentication. Every I single thing that, yeah. has multi factor authentication, use it because even if you have a really bad password, like you know, Andrew has all the time. <laughs> but I'm bum. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> um, make sure, make sure that uh, even if you have a bad password, still they need a second method of authentication to be able to get into your account. So, so multi-factor authentication is super, super important, right? So, um, the other thing that you you should not do, you go to into a um, coffee house, um, you know, like into somebody else's business and stuff like that, and and then you're you're like, oh. Oh, yeah, free Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love free Wi-Fi, right? So uh, don't do it. Just yeah, don't do it. Don't do Get it. a VPN, right? <laughs> so you can your connection is encrypted. And if you if you don't, um, then just use your phone's uh, um, uh, tether, right? Okay. So your hotspot. You can you can use your data from your phone into your computer. So I never trust any public. Um, um, Wi-Fi, and even if you're in a city and they're providing free Wi-Fi, I like I went to the hospital the other day to pick up my my uh, um, um, to do an exam on my on my shoulder, and um, they they have free Wi-Fi, right? So in the hospital, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sign into the Wi-Fi in the hospital. I'm just gonna use my regular cellular, right? So because I don't trust. Uh, networks that are not mine. I don't trust networks that are not my company or our company or or my home, right? So any network out there is a public network. So so don't don't uh, piggyback on the free r- Wi-Fi ride. Okay, so that's that's another for sure. Another another tip, and and again, not to be scared of, but um, you know, cybersecurity and and hacking has become so advanced that there are literally hackers out there that pay in Google, and we talked about this in other shows too, they'll pay advertisements for specific categories. So let's say you're searching something specific and you go to Google and you know the top where it has paid advertising and then it goes down to the organic searches. Well, those paid advertising that are at the top of the, of the top of the page could be a potential hack page where they bought that advertising. You go in and you basically put in your credentials, you've got information, et cetera, and you potentially can be getting hacked that way as well. So it's about taking a look at what you're doing and how you're doing it. So, you know, things not to do um, would be, I would recommend you not to do that. Um, yep. Okay. Other things that you should do not do. When somebody's calling you and. We can use, so, Dan, just to your point, sorry, just because right here, but just remember that thought. We can use VPN for public Wi Fi connects. Absolutely. That's what Dad was mentioning. Great. 100%. I'm glad you put it on there. Uh, just to reiterate that. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chanji is uh, he's uh, he's a really really uh, reputable uh, guy. I always see his comments and everything that he does in LinkedIn. Uh, we appreciate you being here and commenting on that. And absolutely, why? I, I mean, some of the VPNs. Uh, okay, so VPNs. Some of them are free, right? Some some of them are free. You can download them in NordVPN. Um, the you know like um, there's a whole bunch of them out there. They're still better than nothing. Okay, yeah. they're still better than nothing. I, 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 you know, we use our own company VPN, right? Which is, I think, is the most secure. Uh, or I use Tor when I'm in the computer, so I, I go through the Tor channels. Um, I, but still, I, just because uh, you know, like I don't trust uh, third-party vendors. That's that's a, that's a problem. I I don't trust third-party pan uh, vendors. But but still, using one of those VPNs is better than using um, nothing. Of course, nothing at all, right? So, um, all right. So, are you using free antivirus? Is that well, directed at me? <laughs> no, you, no. I know you have Sentinel One, which is I'm one of the best anti ransomware antivirus EDR with the uh, with the whole vigilance. So, so no, you're not, because we know <laughs> that in our company we don't we don't use free antivirus, but a lot of people do, right? So. <laughs> So one of the things about the antivirus is that uh, your Defender, your Windows Defender, actually is actually pretty good. So why are you going to download, let's say, a Vast or a AVG free edition, and 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 when when your Defender is actually pretty decent, right? The the key is yeah. that 
you have to maintain them. You have to make sure that your computer is always up to date and all your antivirus, your firewalls are set up. And and it, Windows makes it very easy. They put a little uh, shield, a green shield that turns red or turns yellow on the bottom toolbar, right, on the tray um, to you to pay attention to that, right? So so you can use Windows Defender. That's that's not, not a problem. Now, if you want to have more robust uh, security, then of course, get into a, a paid antivirus solution. Um, we use in house, we use, and with our clients, we use Sentinel One. I think it's a little more expensive than the uh, than than other ones, but I think it's it's a good protection, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Sean says Windows Defender and VPN is the only protection I have. That's perfectly fine. That's Absolutely. that's perfectly fine. Uh, I like Shanzi, Shanzi's comment too. He says. Uh, basically nothing is free i don't know if you want to put that back up there glass dome but it's so true uh, yes <laughs> it's so true nothing is free. Yeah. Um, it, so when when things are free it's because you're selling your data right so facebook is free why is it free it's because you have given them every single everything. data point that you have your age your even your family status your your behavior your your name your email address they, they know everything about you so so things that are free are usually because they want something from you and data is very expensive, right? So um, so you're giving away um, your data. So not to scare you um, on, on, on this, the, on this things, this is not a show about privacy, right? But, uh, but yeah. So yeah. One, one of the big it's things too, I mean, we could talk about, you know, obviously we're talking about being hacked, et cetera. And, and, you know, there's, there's pros and value, uh, sorry, peaks and pros and pros and cons, I should say to um, different type of, of phones. So for example, Android or, or iPhone, um, iPhone, I find personally, this is my own opinion, but I, and also I think through research, et cetera, it's the truth, but is a more secured entity. It's like its own Island, uh, much more, they're much more strict with who can come in apps that can, that can be added, um, everything gets secured, constant updates, um, where an Android, they kind of let everybody in. It's kind of like a free-for-all, the old West. And so what happens is you'll get a lot of applications, a lot of things you can download on an Android that you may not see on Apple, which yeah. is, it, it's going to invite potential, um, obviously people getting hacked and stuff. So if you're out there and you're looking at different devices and why this isn't a, this isn't pro or against, you know, Android or Apple, everybody has a, rel uh, has a preference. But in all fairness, Apple is probably a much more secure device um, for multiple reasons. Yes, absolutely. I, I think you hit a really good point. So what not to do? Don't download apps just because you want to try them, okay? <laughs> Make sure you go into the in, into the App Store or your Google Play and see the reviews, how many people have downloaded it, um, and, and check, check the app out before you download it because it could be a, a, you know, a rogue uh, app especially in Android, because yes, Android has a little bit of more. Now it's, it's been getting better, Way better right? for sure. but, yeah, but absolutely. it's got a more lenient uh, process for approving apps in the app store. And through be wired technologies, we develop apps and it takes about two weeks, two to three weeks for Apple to approve an True. app. Exactly. It takes about a day for, for Android to approve one of our apps. Right. So, so yeah, you get, especially in Christmas time and kind of like the C, the different seasons, they, there's new apps that are in Android and they can be, they can be full of malware. Um, and then people get hacked and then Android or Google takes them out of the store, but after you get hacked. So yeah, the other thing is what not to do, don't sit in just, let your phone go out of date or your, your, um, um, you know, your, your security yeah, updates yeah. don't, as soon as they come out, make sure that you implement them right away. And if you go to your Apple, um, on your Apple device, or even in Android too, you can see right away, which apps need to be updated. Make sure you constantly do this. I, and it's a nightmare sometimes because I do it every week, every week I go, I'm like oh, 50 uh, apps out of like, <laughs> and then next week I'm like, Oh, 30. And I'm like, oh, okay. So when, when I, what I do is like when I'm charging overnight, the phone, I just put it on updates and updates all the apps, up, updates the operating system and we're, we're good to go. Right. Because, um, um, Apple has been having a lot of, um, you know, um, zero day attacks lately. Uh, they all do. Right. But, uh, but you want to take care of your, of your updates. The other thing. All right. Go ahead, Dan. 
I was going to say one one thing. So we just had a call actually the other day at the office, which I, I won't mention names, et cetera, but it was it was a really good point. So this individual company was hacked. Their email was hacked. And actually, it was hacked to the point where they were actually having fake emails come in and money transfers going to the hackers. Um, and one of the things they did was immediately, and again, it's about immediacy, what you said, Dan, which is so true, is two-factor authentication. Immediately, they changed their passwords and they implemented this. Um, and that right away, I'm sure, mitigated probably 90% of the concern at that point. Yeah. Um, they, they did. They reacted. They didn't have the information. They called us for our expertise. We're still in the process of discussing things with them. Um, but I wanted to share that story because it was a right move. It, they did a very good job right away Absolutely. by identifying it and implementing that. So yeah. it's not about panicking. It's about having an answer and then basically mitigating, uh, you know, mitigating what's happened and then fixing it immediately. Yeah. And, and if you're in IT um, and, and you think that, you know, you have two factor authentication and you're secure, make sure that the 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 computers that go home, right, the computers that you're sending with uh, with employees they you disable the the uh, you know outlook and the teams and uh, drive uh, one drive applications on your com on the computers just let people go into the website you know office.com uh, uh, enter the credentials and do the multi factor authentication in there and but don't install them on the computer because the computer when you click on the outlook app it won't prompt you to to uh, multi factor authentication Right now, there's all the things that you can use, like the uh, the, the Windows. Um, I think it's called uh, In Focus, um, where you can you can put a dual factor authentication to the actual machine um, with uh, your Windows Hello, for example. I think that helps uh, quite a bit as well. But then you have to pay more license, more for licenses, right? So that's a technical tip if you are if you're in IT security. We have some comments. Can you uh, put the comments on the screen to see what uh, what people yeah, are let's, saying? Let's get some questions. I like the questions. If people spend time uh, to read and understand Facebook. Um, Obviously, the EGL or um, it would be less popular. It would be less popular. Well, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, that's the problem, right? Any any of those, it's like four hundred thousand pages of information yes. is like except. Yeah, <laughs> except yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> crazy. Every single everybody has a ULA, and for for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically the pop ups with the privacy policy that you have to accept to get into the application or or the website or 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 whatever whatever software every single software has a e, e, e ULA right so um facebook is one of the worst and that's and i think that's a good comment from Sean because uh facebook is that's that's what the their business is right yeah. so if you look at google for example even google apple whatever other company they have an offering they have products they have services that people use Facebook on the other side, uh, they don't have, I mean, they only have a few products like the Meta and and, and the now, yeah. goggles and stuff like that just coming out that they're not they're not as popular, but their main, main business is gathering information, right? right? The social information, yeah. the social media, right? So so uh, so their their terms are pretty, pretty nasty, right? So all right, so that's the end user license agreement. Thank you, Glasson. He puts yeah, it in there, right. the EULA uh, user. Uh, end user license agreement. Perfect. Read them. Read them up if you have, you know, like a, a two and a half hours. Minutes, <laughs> you can absolutely die from boredom. Make sure you read them, right? So, okay. So, uh, anything else in there? Everything that is posted. Facebook okay. owns the right to anything that is posted. Wow, I didn't know that. You know, that's something I knew. I thought the content that we posted, like this show, for example, it's ours. But I guess they own it. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> okay what else what not to do oh if it's free you are the product absolutely oscar and you hit it right on the on, on sure. the head right yeah, uh, exactly. nail on the head if it's if it's free it's you are the product so yeah unfortunately well, I mean, just and as an example we've all seen it you know those creepy ads that follow us around because they know our trends and it's I, I, you know programmatic advertising as the technical term um that's it's also based on our our activities right so indirectly um to, to oscar's point and to this whole conversation about being hacked we're not necessarily being hacked in a negative way either being hacked in the way that people are using these big corporations are using our data and our information to be targeted for us to be targeted for sales and everything else and, and some people love it some people don't 
but that's also another form of you're not being hacked by any means, but it's you're being used yeah. for your information. So yeah, absolutely. So and you know what? Um, and I was reading an article. TikTok is one of the worst. Eh? It's one of the worst because it, they it, when you I mean, I don't want to scare you. If you have TikTok and you on your phone, for example, um, it tracks everything, even the apps that you're using in your phone. It tracks which Crazy. apps you're using. It it they are able. To, oh my God! If I if I told you the things they can do, they can actually put scripts into the phone and then um and run them, and 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 that's pretty scary. So there is an article that I that I read that uh, a researcher actually started looking at uh, the uh, or, or reverse engineering the TikTok app, and they he was able to find really bad stuff that an app should not be doing when downloaded. So TikTok, it's, 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 it's pretty bad, right? So um, what are the things that, uh, that you should not do? Don't click on everything, <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, yeah, I somebody, <laughs> somebody's sending me an email. I, I don't know who this guy is, but uh, it, it has an attachment. Let me click on it. Yeah. Oh, man. It's... Go ahead, go ahead, Dan. I know you. Where is it? Where is it? There, an alarm. He needed, some, he needed something. Yeah, I, I. You know what? It's funny because I've been so conditioned not to. I, I literally will now answer the phone when I answer my cell phone, and I don't recognize the number. A lot of times, if I don't recognize the number, I don't even pick it up. But if I don't, if I, I do have a lot of people calling me, a lot of companies, etc. So I'll answer the phone, but I won't say anything. I won't even say hello. I'll wait until I have someone call, like answer to me um, before I even say anything, because, you know, yeah. there's, you can even be hacked on through voice on your phone. Um, so a lot of things to be concerned with, obviously, when you're thinking about that. So like I said, I just won't, I'll just hang up if someone, if someone doesn't answer yeah. right away. Um, Especially if, if the, you know, the number is weird, it, it, it there's well, like nine or 10 digits and there's a V at the beginning. Exactly. That is a, a, some sort of a, uh, voice over IP that you know it could be somebody from anywhere in the world calling you right and and the worst is when oh this is Amazon and there is a delay package press one to one uh, exactly and if you press one please don't press one okay <laughs> don't, you know don't what? I'm gonna it, because I, I'm gonna share something I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there Dan because I think it's really important so just so everybody whoever is watching that doesn't know me <laughs> wait, wait 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 Sean says unplug your mouse I I, I saw that I, <laughs> I was hoping that you won't get, you won't have to click on it. It's perfect. <laughs> That's a good but one. Good. I wanted, I wanted to jump in there because you know what? A lot of people, and I'm going to use me as an example for those who know me. So my parents live with me and my mom has dementia. Um, and so she doesn't understand, but my dad, who's 83 years old, um, always allows her to pick up the phone and answer the phone. And I'm like, I keep telling him all the time, dad, don't, because she has, she has enough knowledge that if someone says push one or uh, do something that she potentially could. So, you know, be aware of your surroundings is kind of where I'm going with this. Meaning that, for example, in this situation, um, you know, elderly people, especially, and if someone, for example, in my situation has dementia, they shouldn't be answering the phones and answering questions or, or giving information um, on a, on a any time basis. So just little tips that you shouldn't be doing. So for those of you who have elderly people who live with you or someone who's sick, they probably shouldn't be answering the phones if they don't understand what they're saying or who's on the other end. Yeah. And it's a mess because once, okay. So if you get a text message that says, uh, you know, your, I got one that was, uh, your money has been deposited from PayPal or something like that. Right. And <laughs> yeah. if you respond, so seriously, if you respond, saying stop this or anything to the hackers you're letting them know that they actually hit a right phone number that exactly. they have somebody in there so now you're going to start getting calls you're going to start getting messages don't even bother just block them block exactly them. and i can mm -hmm. promise you all you don't have a relative that's leaving you 500 million dollars <laughs> over in like nigeria <laughs> so so don't yeah. click on that link and respond to my you know i <laughs> promise you you don't <laughs> yeah, there's uh, Oscar says there is a warrant for my arrest on this from the CRA. CRA I I love love those. <laughs> Me too. I get that call all the time. Yeah, yeah there's a warrant for the arrest, or there is uh, some litigation. So stay on the line. If you don't, if you don't click one, one now, press one now. You're gonna be. We're gonna have you know the police will be deployed to your home. <laughs> Uh, Sean says I got an urgent call from the from the Visa Mastercard co company. 
when did they join forces? <laughs> He's a master card. <laughs> you know, that's actually it's, it's something that you should be. That's another really great tip. And, and uh, you know, Sean, thanks for sharing that. Typically, anybody who is hacking you um, or anybody who has, you know, bad intents is a panic. They create a panic. Yes. Most people who are going to be high targeted are going to react to um, a panic situation. So if someone's in a panic to talk to you or a panic to create urgency, the odds are it's not something that's that is is uh, that's, you know, real. So just yes. be aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. 100 percent. And Camara says something in there. She says she loves clicking and some, <laughs> some people, and, and that's what I'm saying. Don't click on everything because some people um, they click, 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 click. OK, without thinking. Right. You yep. get an email, an attachment, links that go to a, a, a hacked website and, and people love clicking. I don't know. You have to. So what not to do? Don't click without knowing what you're doing, right? So sure. take, take at least 10 seconds to check before you click, right? Yeah. So then when you click, you know where you're going, right? So what happens is a lot of the, you can get your, your, your browser infected, right? With the, um, you know, a, a browser um, extension, for example. So if you click on, the, on a link, let's say you click on a link, it installs an extension on your browser and then, you're going to you're going to start seeing things like pop-ups, right? So like pop-ups everywhere or you know technical support or or you go to a website and you click on the link and it goes to another website that says casino and things like that. That means your your browser is is infected. So if you keep on clicking, things like that are going to happen to you. Exactly. So think before you click. That that's kind of the 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 main thing, right? Hey, Dan, Dan question for you. So um, speaking, speaking of, um, I'm going to use my parents as another example. So my father, who is an older gentleman, he sends emails or receives emails from his friends with probably 30 or 40 people on the same email. So an email strand with 30 or 40 different emails oh on that. Gosh. You want to talk to how important that, how, how, how non-secure that is. Maybe you want to just kind of mention something about that. Do not do yes. this guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are chain mail, right? Like remember the 1990s? This is going back to the 1990s. But chain they're still doing mail, it. They're right? still doing it. Yeah. So, um, you know, you just reply all and then put your contact list. And then all of a sudden you see an email with like a hundred different emails. <laughs> and some of those emails, if you go through them, they're company emails. And they're like, oh my God, because if you have somebody that wants to harvest data, that's very easy. It's just, you know, Tom Cruise and then Tom Cruise at blah, 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 whatever, uh, dot com, right? So you have the name and the email. You can create a, a malicious or a spammy list and send it out if you are, if you're a bad actor. So that is I, like definitely no. If you're going to do that kind of stuff, actually, I, I, I should rephrase it. Don't just no. don't do it. Don't, don't. do it. Don't. <laughs> Why? Why? Why are you yeah. doing that? Right. No. So, <laughs> so it's better to be uh, BCC, you know, like uh, um, so people don't see the emails. But uh, um, Sean says real correspondence from a company will not be delivered via text or phone calls. Absolutely. So somebody calls you pretending they're a company. You can tell them, listen, what is your agent name and your uh, and, and your uh, your number, your ID, I will call the company. Exactly. Okay, so because sometimes they're legit. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes there, exactly. there are some calls that are legit. Yeah. And But anybody that, that is asking me, and it's usually promotional stuff. So, for example, I got a call from Rogers, you know, how asking me how my service was, and and uh, um, and if if I want to take advantage of a, of a promotion or something like that, right? So I'm like, okay, you give me your badge or give me your number, your ID, and your name, and I will call the company. Okay, so then I go to the website, Rogers.com. Not the number they here's, give you. Here's the not number. The, not the number not, they give you. No, the number. Don't ask for the number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um go to the website and then actually check the legit number call and then ask for that person or that uh, that id number to get connected for in the cra i know that cra uses pin my pin num my pin code is this cra also sends you emails however in the email it's in in, in english and french and but they won't send you any links they won't send you attachments 
they will just tell you that there is something in your inbox in your CRA. So just log into the CRA uh, website, but no links whatsoever, right? So you got to be careful with the, this kind of uh, this kind of things, right? So, all right. So let's uh, let's go into a, a. Do we have anything else? Any other comments? Uh, Any other questions, comments? I hope I hope this this kind of you know giggle banter back and forth is actually educational because it's fun because we're having fun with it. It's a very serious matter, but I think you learn by real life experiences and actually people understanding that sometimes you know it can be silly, but it's so we all do it. We all overlook yes. things. We all take the simplest path. It's just about being aware and doing those little things that's going to help protect you moving forward. And the more aware you are, the less opportunities some out there is going to basically hack you because. You don't want to ever be in that situation. It's not fun for anybody. Absolutely, absolutely. So this this is from a uh, um, a YouTube channel called the Cyber Maniacs. Okay? okay, and I think you're gonna get a, a giggle. I love, out of this. I, I love I love our videos. I love them. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Check this out. When my inbox gets a nasty surprise, that fishy smell goes up to my eyes. <laughs> Weird emails and something is strange. Account information or something has changed. Emails seem fishy. I know what to do. Listen to me and you can be saved too. Forward and delete. Forward and delete. Your IT department send it away and you can return to your working day. <laughs> what do you think get about it, that? Get it, get it, get it, I like the look. Who's you gotta give the shout out to the video? Kind of kind of a cute little video, actually. So it's a good know. it's a good video. I mean, there's different ways to try to get people to understand the message. And I, obviously using puppets to do that, I think it's a good idea. Same with the human error, right? Human error yeah. is like this yeah, is me, good. the you human error, job. right? You have to because you know there's something called death by PowerPoint. Okay, <laughs> and this happens in companies, right? So, been, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, I've done it many times in the yeah. past. I learned from my mistakes. Okay, so um, sometimes companies, what companies do is like, oh yeah, we're going to have the yearly cybersecurity awareness training, and it is a three-hour presentation by one you know, of our cybersecurity <laughs> experts. Who's gonna go through? And people are. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm gonna. They fall asleep, <laughs> right? So, uh, especially nowadays, with when the attention span is so low that uh, that you gotta you gotta you you really have to uh, have bits and pieces, right? So, micro learning is, is the key for cybersecurity in in companies like like um, a Mimecast. They do a good job because they put fun stuff and, and, and kind of a hilarious content and and this company makes it cute cutesy right so sure. they uh, they they put this uh this um uh, mo uh puppets in puppets there together one thing they do there's some amazing companies out there that actually have cybersecurity awareness training i mean we have our own ourselves but um there's a lot of cyber where to your point dan there's little snippets and they're real life and they're fun they're interacting they're ga engaging and you learn quickly and, and there's some companies out there for your organizations that um, it's it's a fun exercise to learn. It really, really is, and, and they've been getting better and better and better at it. There's no question. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Sean asks if someone gets hacked, aside from disconnecting the endpoint from the network, what else should be done? Okay, it, it really it really depends on the in on the level of um, um, you know activity or malware that the computer has. If it's, for example, um, a um, a browser that's infected with an extension. You don't need to. You don't need to reformat the computer. Okay. You don't need to. Uh, you you just go in, clean it up, right? Um, and uh, reset the uh, the uh, the the browser, for example, to default settings. Uh, make sure you run the antivirus uh, yeah. and do that. Do all that stuff, and and then you'll get back. Uh, you get that endpoint back and running, right? So m might not need to be uh, disconnected from the network. Right. So for more bad stuff, then you need to do it. If, you, if it's, for example, a root kit, then you're going to have to reform that entire computer. So and make sure that, OK, so uh, 
Sentinel one does a good job because you can disconnect computers from the network and then they won't have access to internet either, right? So so you, you just and, and it could do it automatically. So automatically it disconnects from the network, from the company network, but also from any network. So right. you can do a, a hotspot, you can you can't do a Wi-Fi or anything on your computer. It's just completely disable the uh, the uh, your network card, right? So uh, that's really good. But how, however, some other companies uh, that don't have something like an advanced technology like, like Sentinel One, y- if you manually disconnect the computer from the network, um, it might still have access to the internet through Wi-Fi, home Wi-Fi, for example. So, so the the hackers could still be getting or have some sort of RCE or that's a, a remote connection into your computer or a backdoor or the, your computer might still that computer might still be. Um, hacked, you have to disconnect it from the internet altogether, right? So it's isolated. It has no access to the internet. That's the first thing. Um, you can you can um, um, shut it off if you want, right? Um, and then you have to see what's going on inside of the computer. You have to get it to a technician, uh, do a little bit of forensics. It, when in doubt, just reformat, get a new disk image, in, uh, um, you know, in, install the new software and stuff, and and get it up and running, right? Make sure, and this is evidence based. Okay, so this is really important that Sean is asking this question. If you get hacked, if your computer gets hacked, and you're losing data, very sensitive, confidential data, or money, or anything like that, don't reformat the computer until you call the police and they'll tell you what to do, right? Because that's evidence. That could be evidence that they can use against the criminal. If you reform the computer, then you will know what happened. You know what I mean? So I think it's very important that, uh, and, and I'm talking about individuals, right? Um, all right. So we got one more question and we'll wrap up. Okay. So Diego asked, what is your opinion about linking your Google account in all the platforms where you register? How dangerous is that? They hack your Google account and it's all lost, right? Mm, not necessarily. This they, they Google uses author um, authentications, right? This is uh, you can authenticate different um, vendors and and with your Google account. If Google, if your email gets hacked, it won't it won't affect the vendors. However, it is not a good. Um, it, it's not a good uh, um, uh, standard to go by. Um, I I don't like doing that personally. I think it's still not not a good thing to do. You you have to just create the user account with your email and password. I think that's the best way. And then go into the configuration of that platform and then set up your two factor authentication. Make sure you you have a password management so you can. Because in my password manager, I have like two hundred different applications right so so there could be a chance there could be a chance that through google other vendors could get hacked i think there but it, but it's it's better to just go straight email password and and do that uh the other thing not to do thank you uh, uh diego for asking this question what not to do don't use your company email to get into or register for uh, personal accounts. <laughs> okay, what's business is business. What's personal is personal. So make sure you stay away from doing that. A lot of uh, a, a lot of employees and a lot of people they 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 swap, right? So for example, um, I'm going into this uh, third party vendor, this website. I'm going to sign up for the company, and I put my personal inf- information and my personal email address. Don't do that. That's business. That's your your work, right? You should be putting the address that belongs to your company, right? And your and and the phone numbers that belong to the company and the email that belongs to the company. Right. When on the other talking, if you're if you're actually doing the reverse, it's also not good. If you're going to let's say Facebook and you, and you can company. log in using your company email, that is a no no. Don't yeah. don't do that. Don't keep don't make uh don't mix them, right? So keep them separate. I think that's that's a good Good tip in there, right? And, that, and, and you know what? To that point, social media can be used for business. So, for example, LinkedIn is more of a business platform than Facebook. So, to your point, you know, your Facebook one may have your business information on it, and your 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 uh, sorry, your LinkedIn one may have your business stuff, and your Facebook Correct. may not, right? 
So it's very yes. important how you define the difference between the two and what you're using that social media platform for. Absolutely. Very nice. Oh, nice. I, I get some, I get a, a very nice on that one. <laughs> you get a very nice. You get a very nice. And you know what? It's St. Patrick's Day, but as the time goes by, because we're almost at the end of our show, I, I'm turning greener and greener and greener and starting to look like the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody that's it for today thank you so much really appreciate it all the love that you're giving us all the questions Absolutely. and i hope uh, to see you next week and a special shout thank out to you. hattie there for joining i think it's his first show so hopefully we'll see you again we have this every friday and and everybody else who's joined us obviously we love the love we love the support and the interaction it's uh it's, it's a pleasure and we wouldn't enjoy the show without you all so thank you and Dan, All you right. are looking like the Hawk now, buddy. You're looking great. You're looking huge. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. We'll we'll just end. We're, we're going to put the credits in there. People just saying thank you. Uh, in and then before we leave, so we can dance to the end. <laughs> Thanks, guys.